Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. In today's video, you're going to be seeing footage of me creating a resin panelled vase, a bit like this one. This was my first one that I made. It's not the one you're going to be seeing in this video, it'll be a different one. But this is the first one I made out of se eight separate panels all stuck together. So it's quite an exciting new idea and I thought you might be interested to see the process of me making it. It's not a tutorial as such, it's more for your inspiration and enjoyment hopefully. Um, the reason it's not a tutorial is because I made the moulds for this myself and it's not something you can just go out and buy so I didn't see the point in teaching you how to make it when you can't make it unless you make your own moulds. But if there's enough interest in this um, idea, I will do another video showing you how I made the master for the mould and how I made the moulds as well. And then you can do it too. So we'll see how it goes. If you really like this idea, you can request that and I'll be happy to make another video with more detailing. So no more waffling. Sit back and enjoy the video. Right, so before I start showing you the footage of how I made my vase, I just wanted to give you a brief history of the story so far with my vase. What happened was I was sat having a cup of coffee, like you do, and I was in my, here in my craft room and I was looking at this vase, it was on the side, it's a glass vase that I've had for years and years and it's, it's seen better days, but I love the shape of it, I really love it. And I was sat there pondering and thinking, wouldn't it be good if I could make something that shape out of resin and then I thought, nah, that's not going to happen. How can I do that? Because if I made a mould of this, it would be huge. It would have to be in two parts and it would be quite complex, to be quite honest, making a mould of a shape like this. So I thought, nah, can't do that. But I don't like to be beaten on anything. I really don't. So to me, it was a challenge. Instead of thinking, no, that's not possible, I thought, ah, okay, but there might be another way. And that's how this idea was born of making this shape out of separate pieces. And so I did some measurements and I came up with a template. And this is one eighth of that shape. And I will do another video if people are interested in how exactly I got that shape to be the same as this vase, but it's not included in this video. So I made the template and then I made a mould. I don't have one here at the moment. They're in the bath waiting to be washed. <laughs> I do like to put everything in the bath. Um, yeah, so I made a mould and I made eight pieces like this. This was for my first one, my very first attempt. Because I only had one mould, over eight days, I made the pieces and moulded them onto the vase like that. I thought that would be the best way to do it but it took like 10 days from beginning to end to have my vase finished and that was no good so I had another thing and I thought what if I make eight moulds and then I can make it all in one day and it was quite a gamble because it that takes a lot of silicon to make eight moulds but I thought oh it would be so good to have eight to do them all at the same time and to construct it all in one go. So that's what I did. I made eight moulds and this was my second attempt. So I made kind of a lilac-y opalescent one and it worked, which I'm really pleased about after using all that silicon for my moulds. It did work, but there were some things about it. If you, I don't know if you can tell, but it's a bit wonky. I don't like it being wonky. So, yeah, the idea worked, making eight and doing it all in one go, not moulding them on the vase, doing them a different way. That did work, but I still wasn't happy. 
So, we get to today's video and you will see shortly, and not when I do eventually stop talking, you will see how I did it and how I managed to get it not wonky, nice and straight. It's still not perfect, but I will get there. But for my third attempt, I think today's vase that you will see at the end is pretty cool. I think you're going to like it. So, off we go. Here you can see me just adding the colours to the base of my moulds. It's just going to be a thin layer because there's going to be another layer going on top. So all I'm doing is covering the base of the moulds and I'm using Royal Orange, Strawberry Red and Champagne, which are all Arteza pigments. And my resin is from Resin Pro and it's, the, it's called Transparent, Resin Pro Transparent Resin. All of the resins are transparent, it's just called that. <laughs> it's a really good resin and I really like it for this project because the next day after you've poured it, it's still bendy, which means it's perfect for making these vases. And then the day after that, it's rigid. So it goes from bendy to being rigid quite quickly, but you still get enough time for making the vase. Which So it's just perfect really. So here I'm just adding some gold leaf to have give the effect of leaves at the bottom of the vase at, under the trees. So I've got the fallen leaves because I've done the nice autumnal colours and so I thought the falling leaves at the bottom would work really well. Now onto the trees. I drew the tree on my computer and I made it symmetrical so that each panel would join up with the other because I really wanted that, that effect so it would kind of look like lace in a way but trees at the same time. Uh, yeah, so the symmetrical trees which I did on the computer and I printed them out onto acetate which is for laser... The, the one that's especially for laser printers. You need to make sure you get the right one um, and you do need to use a laser printer. So yeah, I've, I've printed it out on my laser printer and cut out eight to fit perfectly into the moulds. I just used the template which I moulded to make the moulds. <laughs> and so I've put them in. I've put one in and the problem you have doing this method is you get air trapped underneath and you need to push the air bubbles out. Uh, there will be some left over. I pushed and pushed and pushed and I still had some air bubbles underneath which isn't a massive problem because it will be the inside of the vase and you don't really see them. I had quite a few and I think you'll agree when you see the vase at the end that you don't know they're there unless you're looking for them so I didn't worry too much about that afterwards. I repeated the process for all eight pieces and once they were all in, and it did take a while I've got to say, <laughs> once they were all in I added clear resin over the top. I didn't wait for that part to cure, it was all just done in one go. Clear over the top and give it another squish about making sure that that acetate wasn't floating to the top. The next day the panels were all ready to demould and they were still nice and bendy which was absolutely perfect for the job I was going to do. I needed to take a nail file and just smooth off any of the edges that were a little bit messy where the resin had gone over the edge of the mould and then they were ready to get into position. Now, because my previous attempt had ended up wonky, <laughs> I decided to draw out a plan so that I knew I was positioning them perfectly in, into the right place. And so I used some wallpaper and just got the angles right and everything and marked out where each one should go. And that way I knew it was going to be straight.
Next I cut out a circle of sticky backed plastic just to go in the middle face up sticky side up so that I could position my pieces onto it and for them to keep in place because I wanted to just stick together the middle pieces first of all um, which would be the base of the uh, vase so that was what I was doing here so I just taped it down to keep it still and then I put all the pieces wrong with the inside facing up onto that sticky back plastic after that I applied UV resin just over the middle section the base section and rubbed it all in made it nice and smooth and cured it under my UV lamp and that's what I've done throughout the process of making this vase I've used UV resin to attach all the pieces together that's my glue of choice <laughs> Right, for the next bit, after spending absolutely ages getting my camera angle right, I forgot to press record. It's just typical for me. Anyway, <laughs> all I did, all you've missed, I pulled each section upwards and put the neck pieces next to each other so they were all nice and neatly next to each other. Put some gaffer tape around the neck to hold it together and then I've stuck a rolling pin in there because that was the only thing I could find that really was a good fit for the shape of the neck and it kept it secure. Once the rolling pin was in there I taped the neck to the rolling pin to keep it up in that position so it didn't keep slipping down and then I was ready for the next step. Right, so the next job was to get some um, sticky tape, just general purpose sticky tape. I call it sellotape, but that's just a brand name, isn't it? I still always call it sellotape, regardless of the brand. Anyway, I got some sticky tape and just um, stuck down all the seams where everywhere where the two pieces join, I stuck them together temporarily, of course. That's all going to come off again. But the that way it keeps its shape it's quite good uh, with my first vase I made I molded the panels over the original vase because I thought that was the only way for them to get the right shape and to get rigid in that shape but I've discovered that by taping them all together they keep themselves into the right shape they become really strong and it just works perfectly so yeah that's what I've done I taped all the way around and then basically what what I could have done is left it for the next day and started to glue it together once it was rigid but I didn't I decided to do it while it was still bendy and I'm not sure whether that was the right choice or not but I was impatient <laughs> Right, it's now all held together with sticky tape and it's only a few minutes later so those pieces are still bendy but you, they don't look it do they? You can see how just by taping them together it becomes really strong and anyway the next job was to just peel off a little piece of tape at a time, now this is the time consuming part <laughs> and as you take off one piece of tape, then you add some UV resin down the seam, try to do it neatly, and then I just cured it under the lamp for two minutes and went on to the next bit. And eventually I got there all the way around and all I needed to do was sand it. Here is the next day, all the tape is off, all the seams have been glued together with the UV resin and I'm just sanding down all those seams where the UV resin got a little bit messy and you can see how dull and scratched it goes from the um, sanding block. I've actually used quite a coarse sanding block but it doesn't matter because once that gets covered in resin you don't see any of the scratches at all so I didn't worry too much about the fact that it had gone very dull because I 
know from experience that it's not a problem at all. You can't see uh, from the camera angle, but I am wearing a mask. It's really important to wear a dust mask for an, any job where you're sanding resin because it's quite dangerous to breathe in the particles from the resin. Here, as I wipe away the dust with a baby wipe, you can see how the colour comes back again once it's wet, which is the same thing that will happen when the resin goes over the top of this when it's on my turner. Right, it's time for my favourite part. I've put my vase onto my cup turner, which is mounted on top of a box because um, the cup turners aren't really designed for something of this shape and size, so I had to adapt it a little bit. I've also put, if you can see, my hand's in the way at the moment, but I've glued a disc of cardboard onto there because I found that sometimes um, the vase was traveling upwards as it over time it would move and go up the post of the cup turner so I had to put a bit of a stopper on there and that's all that that's there for so yes on in position on my turner and all I'm doing is gently rubbing on some of the transparent resin pro resin just as before i've only mixed about oh i think about 26 grams of resin it doesn't take much and i just use my gloved hand to rub the resin on some people would use a brush or a one of those sponge brushes but i prefer to use my hand because you can really feel where you've been and where you haven't been and it, it just I don't know, it's hard to explain. It feels part of the process, stroking it. It's kind of like you're giving it some love. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it sounds a bit strange, doesn't it? But I just like to be stro to stroke that resin on. Um, and yeah, it's all, for me, it's part of the artistic process, is putting that love into it and stroking it. And I know I'm sound. <laughs> I know I'm sounding really weird now, but I do. I like that bit, just stroking it on. <laughs> Once I had it mostly covered with resin, I switched it on and left it on, and just continued to rub it all over and make sure I hadn't missed any bits. And. Once you leave it, it just settles itself down. So any marks you've made with your fingers that will just settle down by themselves as it turns. And I leave it on a good ooh, eight hours. I leave it on all day, turning away. And it, it works really, really nicely. And here you can see where I've put the cup turner onto a box and just taped it on and it elevates it so that the um, vase isn't hitting the table and it, it works that way, otherwise it wouldn't work. <laughs> the following day after the resin had cured I printed out my logo on my laser printer onto clear adhesive film and then I put a final layer of resin over the top on the cup turner just like before and it was finished. You can see here as I'm holding it how large it really is but you know it's actually really light and I think overall it, it, it took about 500 grams of resin which isn't that much really for something so big and yeah I think it just looks absolutely fantastic <laughs> even though I say so myself I'm really really pleased with this and it's not often that my work turns out as it was in my head before I started it. So it's a huge success for me and I hope you like it just as much. Please let me know in the comments what you think. And if you haven't already subscribed and you enjoyed the video, please do so and it will help my channel to grow. Thank you for watching and I will see you again very soon. Bye for now.